Hello, good morning, and welcome to The Biggest Show on New Day on TV3. My name is Beatrice Edu, and today we are going to look into what the former Speaker of Parliament, Professor Michael Quay, is saying. He says that the minority is wrong. Harun Idrisu, former minority leader, is wrong to ask the Speaker of Parliament to declare four seats vacant because those individuals have declared their interest to contest as independent candidate. And there have been a number of conversations around this very uh, issue uh, on, in Parliament, and we'll be bringing you details of that and have a conversation on this. And today we have an all-female panel. And let me start by introducing my panel here, who are uh, all here with me, uh, Beatrice uh, Beatrice Annan is deputy spokesperson for the uh, John Mahama campaign team. She'll be joining us very shortly. I have on set with me Dr. Ekia uh, Amwako. She's communications team member, the governing New Patriotic Party. Good morning to you, ma'am. Thank Good you for joining morning. us. Happy to be here. Right here on my right side, I do have with me uh, Nanaya Jantwa. She's former general secretary for the Convention People's Party. Good morning, ma'am. Thank you for joining us. How you used to. Worry me, PRC. Add that one. <laughs> she hasn't forgiven me for that, but we'll talk about that offset. <laughs> I also have with us uh, Susan Edra Mankwa. She is a member Alliance for Revolutionary Change. Good morning to you, ma'am. Thank you so much for joining us on Big Issue. Thank you so much. So I want to remind you, really, of these four constituencies we are talking about and uh, that call by Haruna Idrisu, the, the petition to the Speaker of Parliament to declare uh, the seats vacant because those individuals have declared their willingness to uh, contest as independent candidate going into this year's general election. So we do have, uh, Formina, uh, the current Member of Parliament for the area is... Esiama Andrew Esiama Mwakon, he's filed his nominations as NPP candidate. Remember that going into the 2020 general election, he went as an independent candidate. And since he won that seat, he's been doing business with the governing NPP in parliament. We also do have Agona East, uh, current MP for the area, Cynthia Mamle Morrison. She's filed to contest as an independent candidate. One of the seats Haruna Idrisu is asking be declared vacant. We have Suhum constituency, the current MP. He's an MPP candidate, MP Kwejo Asante. He's filed to contest as well as an independent candidate. And, of course, uh, we have a Memphis Central uh, current NDC MP Peter Kwachiaka to contest as independent candidate. So these are the seats that Haruna Idrisu per Article 97, which has become one of the uh, most talked about articles in the 1992 Constitution. And I'll read that to you. It says, a member of parliament shall vacate his seat in parliament. The G says, if he leaves the party of which he was a member at the time of his election, to, to Parliament to join another party or seeks to remain in Parliament as an independent candidate. So that is really the contentious article that the majority leader says he's going to, well, he's already filed at the Supreme Court to seek interpretation of. The H says if he was elected a member of Parliament as an independent candidate and joins a political party. So uh, that's a continuation of that. Let me bring you some history, and I just mentioned that to you, that Professor Michael Quay is speaking, defending his decision when he took it in November of 2020. And the Speaker of Parliament, Professor Michael Quay, uh, in the build-up to the 2020 polls, declared the Formina seat vacant after the MPP MP decided to contest for re-election as an independent candidate. I just gave you that, and that's Andrew Amakwesiyama, uh, who is now also wanting to go back to the party he left in 2020 to uh, contest, and he eventually won that seat. Let's listen to Professor Michael Quay. He actually spoke with us last night, defending his decision in 2020 and why he thinks that Harun Idrisu has no locus now to call for uh, the speaker to declare the four seats vacant. Let's listen to him, and after that, we'll come to the panel to get your thoughts. Watch this. In order to understand this matter clearly, you have to give it a purposive interpretation. And if you want to give it a purposive interpretation, then you must know, ask yourself, 
But where is this coming from at all in our in our constitution? It is coming from 1979 constitution and 1969 constitution. Why did this start at all? Because in the coma regime, there was this practice of carpet crossing. People moving for the political party that they belong to upon inducement, upon fear, and so on and so forth. It was a tool used in breaking the opposition. Now, so in 1969, the Constitution premise wanted this not to happen again. Therefore, it's a protective measure. It is a shield for political parties so that their members in parliament will not be induced or move out of their political party out of fear or whatever. Mm. It's all to the constitutional, that is the right constitution making proceedings, you will find this there. If you understand that this is a tool in the hand of political parties to protect them, to protect them. And that is why when the Fomina case came, the first thing that I did when the political party the, that the member belonged to complained was to write to the Fomina uh, MP and ask him to explain. And you watch that the speaker, the former Speaker of Parliament, Professor Michael Quay, defending his decision and explaining why he thinks Harun Idrisu and the minority are wrong, trying to get the current Speaker of Parliament, Alban Bagwin, to declare the four seats that I mentioned to you earlier vacant. Mind you, that Alban Bagwin will be taking a decision on this as to the way forward on this very matter today when Parliament uh, sits. But let me come to the panel here, and I want to start with you, uh, Dr. Kia Amuakon. Uh, well, before I come to you, let me tell you that Beatrice Annan, who is Deputy Spokesperson, John Mahama campaign team, has joined us. Good morning. You're welcome on uh, Big Issue. Good morning. On your day. Yes, good morning. I'm just tired, but I'm happy to be here. Um, this morning, we are starting or continuing our campaign in the Greater Accra, so you can see me cladded in my NDC, beautiful NDC colors, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you very much for joining us. Let me start with you, Dr. Kiamwako. Uh, you know, Professor Michael Quay, of course, came from the MPP. He took a decision in 2020, and people are expecting that he set precedence, and so we should maintain that. And yet, he seems to be deviating from that argument, and people find that a bit hypocritical. How, how, do, you, how do you marry the two arguments we are hearing now? Okay, so first let me say good morning to everybody. Um, I think this issue, firstly, is, is, is not something that, personally, I, I don't think we should be spending too much time on it. It's, it's a matter of, of, of parliamentary procedure, which is fine. But... If the NDC is interested in getting majority in Parliament, there's a clear, set-down way to achieve that. And we only have two months to election, so uh, why, why this? Back to your question about Honourable Michael Quay's position. He's not the current Speaker, so this decision falls to a different Speaker. And the little we know about par parliamentary proceedings and the way things go, what we know is that the life of every Parliament is different. That's why they are named separately, and we don't just move on through it's jumbled up together. And this, the instances are similar, but not the same. So if you listen critically to what um, Right Honorable Michael Quay said, he explained himself, and I think it's clear. And yesterday as well, um, Honorable Atachia was also in Parliament. He gave a very powerful arguments on this issue and I think it's, it's, it's worth watching. It just sums up the whole issue. People think that the argument he gave was very political. He didn't even interpret the law legally as he should have. How, how didn't he interpret the law legally? That's how people are viewing what he said. I, I, haven't, I haven't heard of such people but let's, let's continue. How are the two situations the same? And are we not jumping ahead of ourselves? In 2020, I think um, Honorable Lesiama was going to contest as an independent candidate. It came to the attention of the MPP because there was some internal strife, and the party um, put it, brought it up to the speaker for discussion. So that's, that was the procedure, isn't it? Has the same thing happened now? So on what basis is the speaker supposed to make his decision? That's the first thing. 
And number two, if the Honorable Majority Leader, Honorable Afenia Markin, has sent the, the matter to the Supreme Court, which is the highest court of the land, for interpretation, what is the problem with that as well? Because obviously, the, the language in Article 97 can be interpreted more in multiple ways. In what if it's you? No, as in, that's the way the law, that's why people go to court and argue it out. Or well, there'll be no point of going for lawyers to go to court and spar, isn't it? So you can't say when it favors me. There are arguments. So if you make, a, if an argument, an argument can be made based on the lettering there, and another argument can be made, the rights person to be able to distinguish between these two is the Supreme Court. So let's leave it to them to to come to a conclusion on what is. Because if you read it carefully, I don't know if you can put it back up so that we can look at the, it again. Article 97. 97 G. G. If he leaves the party of which he was a member at the time of his election to Parliament to join another party or seeks to remain in Parliament as an independent member. So right now, Honorable Esiama is an independent member. He's not seeking to remain in the 8th Parliament as an MPP MP, is he? Go ahead with yes. your point. He has only declared his intent for the next Parliament. But the other argument is that the declaration of intention alone... It doesn't, it doesn't affect this parliament, and that is a valid argument. And so who is going to be able to decide between these valid arguments to decide what the clear interpretation of the law is? The Supreme Court. Uh, Susan, I want to get your uh, preliminary comment on the argument she's making. Uh, you know, Dr. Ekea Makon is essentially saying that we're jumping the gun. We're not jumping the gun. I mean, <laughs> why are we jumping the gun? We... I mean, it's 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 out there for all of us to 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 see it for what it is. Um, I think that the honourable um, professor uh, is splitting hairs. And I mean, um, and when you start splitting hairs and saying that oh, um, you know, the party has to go and declare the seat vacant, and then that is what. So if the party hasn't gone to declare the seat vacant, then that means the seat is not vacant. What does the MPP constitution say? I think that the MPP constitution goes to say that when you take such an ash action and they have a, it's somebody they have chosen as an, a, a candidate and you go ahead to be independent, you should find yourself automatically terminated your uh, membership of their party. Mm -hmm. So if the person has automatically terminated his membership of his party by his action, obviously he cannot remain as your MP. I, you, you, you know, and if the MPP, true to character, does not go on a principled, uh, um, 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 you know, um, um, basis to go and declare that seat vacant somebody else cannot see that it is wrong and say that this is this is not the right thing to do you think at this you know, stage for I, political I, expediency the MPP is not being principled I think so and well I, I, like I said true to character but you know I, what they have to remember is that karma comes around <laughs> and karma is they say karma where is an old lady that where it serves you tea laced with your own poison. You, you understand? And so they, they, are, they are drinking their own poison. But the, 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 the rules and the laws are there in black and white. And we can all see, see it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. That when you take such an action of declaring yourself independent, you forfeit your membership of the political party. It is true for the NDC. It is true for the MPP. You understand? So that, I mean, um, we have to wait for the party to come and tell um, the speaker that this person is no longer our member before the speaker can declare it vacant. Well, I mean, we can split those hairs. You, you understand? But even the, like we have read in the Constitution, the Constitution also says that. Because at that time, that person sitting there, you know, haven't declared that they are independent, has lost their membership of their party. In, in whether they intend in the next uh, parliament or not, presently, they are not a member of the party in which they, they, they initially were um, um, elected into office. So... So what are they doing the there? Argument, the argument of Dr. Kia Mwako is that in um, uh, Mwako, Esiame's case, at least 
the, there was that rife. The party made it clear to the speaker. And if you, I don't know whether you had a chance to listen to Professor Michael Quay last night. Yes. He said that, in fact, when the, the letter of the party came to him, he actually made Esiama aware, and Esiama didn't even respond to him. And so he's trying to he paint a picture he that he's trying to paint a picture that the scenarios or the situations are not the same. <laughs> the principles are the same. <laughs> you see, when scenarios change and things like that, and we become so fluid, and we don't stick to the principle, then we are lost as a people. There are there's certain things that, on principle. We have to move, because life does change. Circumstances do change, you understand? But what must not change is the basic decency and the basic um, 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 truth, you know? Truth does not change, and principle. You, you, you get it. If we say that we are going to go like that, next time too, it will maybe or the other way around. And then we will say that, okay, le because let's face it. If it had been the other way around, and there had been four NDC MPs that had, um, what do you call it? Declared, uh, declared, intention, their, declared. Their, their declared their intention to. You think the MPP would not have been jumping up and down to say that, declare these seats vacant so that they can retain their majority? Uh, that, they probably would have. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can eat my heart that if it had been, you know, the other way around. So why do we not do things on principle? Your party's constitution says that when a person takes an action like that, they have vacated their, their, or they have forfeited their membership, okay? The constitution says that when a person takes an action like that, they have literally crossed over or they have gone into a no man's land and so that seat is vacant. Whether it is on the 6th of December, the principle has to be upheld so that we, it, it can run through next parliament and the parliaments that come after that. Uh, you understand? Mm. Yeah. Uh, if, we, if we think that this is not going to work for us, why? The constitution and those things are not cast in stone. Maybe then we can begin to revise our constitution. And make to, it to more the, clear, like Apenio Martin is asking for it. I, I, I no, that, that's not revising the constitution. He's asking for it to be made clear. I'm talking about revising the constitution and reforming the constitution so that maybe we do not find things like this, you know, which they may think is ambiguous and so it requires interpretation. But otherwise... It is clear for all of us to see. We all know what the truth is. It's clear for all of us to see. I'm coming to you, Nanaya Jantua. You've heard the two ladies speak. I'm wondering where you stand on this very argument. Beatrice, you should know where I stand. Good morning and good morning. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm very Beatrice, okay, okay. Yeah, She's yeah. also Beatrice. She's Beatrice. Beatrice. There are two Beatrices here. Yeah, there are two Beatrices here. Who is one and who is two? You, you see, Beatrice, um, the MPP, they are running away from their own shadow. And they are being very disingenuous. Very, very dishonest. I was sad when I heard from Professor Michael Quay because I, I, I do respect him a lot. And I didn't expect him to come out in that manner. When he himself has set a precedent in 2020. So I, I didn't expect him. So, I mean, I'm like, w what is he talking about? Because if you come out to say that the procedure is wrong, you, have, you, you need to do a dichotomy. Are we talking about substance or we are talking about procedure? If you say procedure is wrong, that is different. Does it negate the fact that what Honorable Haruna is saying is true? When you read it, I... I had arguments in my mind that, okay, maybe in the next parliament, now they are there as MPP. But I went and I looked at 97, and I got to the G. It's so categorical, it's so specific, that if you, you go and take on the membership of another party, and it's even clear, saying that if you run as an independent, you see, the point is that the people who have gone for independence, they are dissatisfied and they've done a coup against their own party. This is a coup d'etat. Because they were not happy the way they were treated. And they knew, I, I believe as parliamentarians, they knew. 
I am surprised that Honorable Afenyo Makin is going to ask for interpretation. This is the supreme law of the land, the constitution of the Republic of Ghana. And in every political party's constitution, as long as you declare for another party, as long as you go and stand on the ticket of another party with different ideologies, or you go on your own, you are you're out. So I am even surprised that the MPP themselves haven't written to these three people to get them out. And you see, I don't think that this is also political because in the midst of all of them, it's the Amenfis Central MP who is also NDC. So if these three goes, he's also going. But the ND MPP is going to lose more. Are they going to? They, they have lost already. They always lose. So what is the point? Now, you see, because of their character, that is why they are here. Because the Suhum man, you remember, he was very upset and he think and he he said that they manipulate the system for somebody else to be there. The, the, the special assistant of the chief of staff. Mm. And he has always been unhappy. So certainly, he, 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 doesn't, he, he doesn't feel that he should be on the MPP ticket. And it's happened before. Joe Weiss. You remember Joe Weiss? Bekwai. He also went independent and became a deputy speaker. Now for Mana. He also went independent and became, has become a deputy speaker. So there's precedence to it. So I don't even know why the MPP themselves haven't written to these three that they should be off. Yeah, but you yeah. would recall that during the primaries of the MPP, the, the party kept saying that the party was not intentionally doing anything to favor any one particular candidate. And so if individuals felt aggrieved and they would not use internal processes, it, it didn't necessarily mean that the party was at fault. How, how, do, you, how do you understand that and, and match that with your argument? I am saying that the party would certainly say that they are not at fault. Which party would say that I manipulated the system for somebody? No party hierarchy, no party structure would say that. Do you get me? So if people are dissatisfied, either they leave, they don't come back again, or they, they are bold enough and they think that they can win the seat and they are popular enough, they go independent. And uh, um, 97G is very categorical. I mean, we should not even be talking about it. Nobody should seek any interpretation. Then it means that you are telling us that as our constitution stands, it has not been reviewed. But as it stands now, you are saying that you don't believe in the Constitution. Mm. That is what orders our life. Maybe we have ignored the Constitution. There's a Constitution holiday. And that holiday is a very nonsensical holiday because we don't even use it to interpret the Constitution to the members of, of, of this nation. Let me get your thoughts, uh, Beatrice. Mm -hmm. And uh, you heard uh, Dr. Kia reiterating the point that it's like NDC just wants to use any means to declare itself a majority in parliament. That's a point that Atachi and the MP for Buakwa South made earlier when uh, the argument started on the day parliament resumed, uh, October 15. And uh, Dr. Kia is reiterating that point. How do you respond to that? I, I think as for Dr. Kia, I can pardon her because she's a medical doctor and we are a dentist and we are asking her to do a constitutional interpretation and but that doesn't mean that she doesn't understand the constitution no it, it, there are rules of constitutional interpretation and yesterday if a whole michael Luque could fumble he practically didn't know what he's saying he was saying i, I think martin your host asked him that what was the ground for saying that this was materially different do you have any law to support he fumbled and fumbled and fumbled. He couldn't say anything. So if Professor Michael Kwe could not defend this, mm. I don't think anybody in the MPP can defend it and we'll be wasting our time listening to other people. But the point I want to make is that we should be worried about the fact that these are the characters on MPP leading the country. You know, when we say principles, it means that they have some universal levels of application. And so principles generally will not change to seize the whims and caprices of people merely because your positions have changed. And if you have a group of people in power who don't have regard for principles, including even precedents set by themselves, it should tell you and give Ghanaians a vivid picture of what happens at cabinet meetings that these guys sit 
and they just make decisions in the heat of the moment. It matters not what has been done in the past. It matters not what they themselves have done. As long as position change, we all don't have values. Conscience does not matter. Integrity and honesty should be thrown to the dogs. Let the conversation change. And then again, let's make it an NDC MPP matter. And everybody, and including this morning, we'll talk about it. And we are done. You see, and I'm happy that this is happening in the lifetime of the MPP government. You see, when they are setting the high levels of corruption as a precedent, I think there should be a wake-up call to them. When the president is intermeddling with independent institutions like the EC, packing the courts with judges who are known MPP um, executives, I think these precedents should let the MPP know that when power changes, they will gnash their teeth in ways that they will not even remember. Because you know what we have to do? We ha all we have to say as lawyers in court and all we have to do in the discussion is to say that on all fours, this is in tandem with what was happening in the past. Why do I say so? Professor Michael Quay himself, in November 2020, when the same thing happened, who was the speaker of the MPP? In his ruling, dated 7th November 2020, I'll just quote excerpt. He says that on that occasion, that this current parliament will be sitting and operating as an official parliament of the Republic of Ghana. We shall not have a situation adopted freely by any certain MP where he or she will be campaigning openly against the party that he or she represents in parliament and yet ridiculously stand against that party. No purposive interpretation of law would allow for such radical to prevail. And to quote his words, today, we are being invited to entertain such radical. Why? Because the MPP benefits. So you, you don't buy into what any of these arguments. What is happening is that Article 97, 1G and H, H are very clear. Yeah. There is no need for interpretation. In fact, if you go to court, before you invoke Article 2.1 and ask the Supreme Court to interpret a constitution, it means that rivalry meanings would have been placed on it. Where is the rivalry meaning? Mm -hmm. That at the time, if you cease to be a member of a political party, at the time of your election, then you have to vacate your seat. Where is ambiguity? But you know what the MPP does? When you're marking going to court, it's like a child looking for a mother for breast milk. I have to be fed. The court has become a very convenient excuse for the MPP. A goal, let's get a unanimous decision. But that's what I'm saying. Even with the unanimous decisions they are getting in the court, we will apply it to them. But you know, it hasn't always been the case because there was recently a case where the MPP lost and Apenio was, you know, which, on, on, on the floor case? as well. I'll try and, start and give Please you that specific look, one I, where I you look, said that yes. the fact that this was ruled against the MPP as which, people were expecting is indicative that, that, case that it's, in, it's, it's indicative that yeah. uh, the courts are working. But, but the point I'm making is that the MPP have to be careful. And these are the signs to come that we will apply the same rules and precedent. But principles must matter in politics. You cannot give a ruling as early as 7th November 2020. And then we are in October and all of a sudden the same man who gave the same ruling will turn around and say that, you know what, the facts are different. Why? Because they say somebody should petition. No law. The constitution did not state the procedure on how that petition ought to be done. They are best bet is that the standing orders of parliament in, I think, order 99 states that a member shall notify the speaker. And after the notification, the member would then petition. How the speaker is notified, we don't know. And, that's and point. these are public records. And so the speaker, by reason of the fact that any member has filed with an electoral commission, these are, I mean, 
public records that nobody ought to have even notified the speaker. The speaker could have raised it on his own. We cannot live our constitution to the whims and caprices of the MPPs to satisfy their ego. And, Bishis, let me make the last point, that we have operated the 1992 constitution from 1992. Even under the Dan Rawlings that people felt he was a, an autocratic leader or a military leader, Nobody called for a constitutional reform. Why? Because the leaders were managing the countries with their conscience, albeit there may be some excesses. Kufor did his part. President Rawlings did his part. President Mills did his part. President Mahama came. They were exercising what we call constitutionalism. Some factors to the constitution, not living like Arabian kings. The only reason we are having to always subject our constitution to multiple interpretations and to ask even when there is no need for us to be debating is because the president operates like an Arabian king. Everything must satisfy his ego. The MPP political party would not even concede in a serious political party, the party should be holding a crisis meeting, saying that this is what has happened. This is what the constitution says. And so what do we do as a party and move forward? But why? They believe they have the courts. They believe they can all of a sudden use the media to circumvent interpretation and get all of us discussing. Are we not tired? Are we not tired that even we as a people, we cannot have some level of predictability in our system? Uh, Dr. Kiyamaku, these are serious allegations that Beatrice is making against the MPP. How do you defend these in, in the light of, you know, what uh, the former speaker has said? Okay. So when, when things you say are easily verifiable and the truth is on your side, you don't need to be emotional or try to meander into people's personal uh, we are all discussing the issues. I don't think you wanted to empanel a, a panel full of lawyers. I don't think that was your intention, mm. is it? So let's go straight to the point. That this thing is not the first time this is happening. And they are different. So four parliamentary, one is NDC, three are MPP. One is an independent candidate who is going, basically returning to the fold as a member of the MPP, Honorable Esiama. Two are party people that are going independent. Let's make that clear, because it seems like everybody wants to... Honorable CMI is now an independent. In, this, in the life of this parliament, he's an independent. Independent who's chosen to do business with the MPP. MPP. Exactly. These things have happened since 2000. This is not the first time a seat has been vacated or a, a, some, a situation like this has, has happened. And the spirit of this was to prevent cross-carpeting. And every time it's happened, a petition was sent by the party because if the purpose of this is to prevent people from crossing the carpet then it's, it's up to the ndc to say that okay so this person is no longer part of us mr speaker vacates the seats and in the grand scheme of things all of this to me to the party it is not absolutely relevant what is wrong with sending um, this issue to the supreme court we all read the article again and then you can in fair, are they talking about this parliament or the par parliament in perpetuality? But you can't sit here and presume to be the arbiter of all legal knowledge and, and to interpret it as you want. Mm. That is why we have the Supreme Court and we will hear from them. All of this happening, why is the NDC trying to um, make themselves majority in parliament through this rule? It's what I will call it. But, but, there but, is... A very, a very easy way to do it. Go out with your message December 7th and then convince people to do it. But they have failed so woefully at that. Let me just start by this. On, um, Ex-President Mahama is the one who is on record, on video, having told your, young lawyers at their time, or NDC lawyers, to hurry up so that he can appoint them to, to the bench. I mean, the Constitution gives the president exactly. the power so to why appoint. Is, yes, so why is the NDC trying to say that the MPP has packed the court? When it is your flag bearer who is on record to have said, to have encouraged that act, so if you are saying it is wrong, it has to be wrong both ways. You are the one trying to go on the path of principles and whatnot this morning. The allegation so, Beatrice made yes, was that in as much as the, the president has the power to appoint, the NDC feels that the president is choosing pro-MPP people. And what I am saying is that it is 
ex-president John Mahama, who has told his people that Harry up with law school so I can appoint you. I'm paraphrasing his words, but that's basically what he said. Is that wrong? So he should rather be accused of exactly. that same so thing. So you, you is don't sit here and make that kind of argument. What we are trying to say here is that everything that is going on from the beginning of this election, I've always said it is just a diagnostic symptom of a campaign in crisis, a sinking campaign, a campaign that has no message, and that's the problem the NDC are suffering with. So every day they wake up, bring another issue of propaganda, let's distract Ghanaians. Why don't you go on the campaign trail and tell us how you are going to stabilize the city? I've not heard them say it. The flag bearer of um, the MPP, Dr. Mahmoud. Can you raise the flag to say just wait your turn it's, uh, it's not you please go ahead your with your point yes yeah, so you are unable to tell people what you are going to do about that everybody here will sit here and tell us <laughs> the problems this is happening this is happening this is happening i've never watched this tv to watch any of the panelists here propose any solutions that is what we want to change how is that going to stabilize the city maybe bitches can explain that to us today maybe it's, it's not going out in the middle of the night at 2 a.m to go and cash a check for your girlfriend like the ad that i saw on, uh, about ndc how are you going to improve healthcare? What are you going to do about it? Uh, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya has said, let me talk about what he has said to stabilize the city, about how we are going to bring the gold to stabilize the city. How are we going to improve healthcare? We have plans to improve healthcare. And yesterday, I'm sure you saw when we launched the e-health um, platform, how are we going to improve roads? The 12,000 kilometers of roads that this government has built. What is expert Ben Mahama saying on that? It's, it's, it has everything to do about it. This is why they are going to parliament to try and get um, an illegitimate majority. So I'll let you continue. Because their sinking ship of a campaign has become <laughs> obvious to everybody. Ex-President Mahama mounts a platform and he says that I'm going to audit the 12,000 kilo kilometers of roads you've done. That is what a man who has been president before has to tell the people of Ghana. He cannot fathom how that is possible. Uh, but we have done it and we have solutions and plans to build more bring in private sector to do that this is the kind of conversations we expect to have we want you to come and tell us what you can do not to go to parliament and try and usurp the, the franchise of people who have elected leaders to go inside and, I want, and to, I, want to, I want to I want if you have a message <coughs> go down to your people go and campaign why do you not campaign your next president Mohammed's record go and tell us what he did when he was president tell us what he plans to do now and then you will win those seats and in, in parliament but that's never going to happen because they are unable to articulate anything. They, now they've even reduced to trying to steal the free SHS policy that everybody knows is, is an MPP policy. You said you started the free SHS policy. You said you started the free SHS policy in 2015. Yet in 2016, you are on record as saying that you will not implement the free SHS on the whimsical promise of a desperate politician. So how do you say that in 2016? and say you implemented this in 2015. It's like people don't like to be told the truth. So what do you have, NDC? What did you do in the time so, that you were in government at that time? What were your policies? You have nothing, and so you have to piggyback on ours. Now we are saying that we are going to decentralize healthcare, make sure every district has a hospital. What's your first, your solution to that? It's overly ambitious, blah, 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 blah. Now you've seen that the projects are ongoing. Most of them are going to be completed. You come and say you'll finish it. If you didn't have the temerity, you never had that plan, you never put your head on a pillow to dream about this, how can Ghanaians trust you to finish it? So let me let me let me refer you to one of the statements you made that uh, Dr. Ma Mahmoud Baumia has a vision to stabilize the city mm -hmm. as we have it now. He's been in power for almost eight years. He's been the head of the economic management team. As we speak, the city is almost 16 Ghana. That's that's I, I mean, mean I would uh, to, explain to that. Dollar. Yes, I would explain that. So um, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia and His Excellency Nanado Dankwa have been in power. They have been in government since 2017, right? Mm. What he said was he was going to make the economy of our country better. True or false? Hey. I hope you give us the same uh, minutes. Uh, 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 if you don't want me to, that, 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 that
to so respond. She That's is, fine. She it is, is not part of the I, I know that she is talking about the fact that MP NDC what that doesn't. Want to do it with has their everything to do with this. Dream. Why are they going to? When has it happened like that before? This is law. No, this since two thousand. When have. has that happened like that? When has the opposition party been the one to petition Parliament? I, Why are they doing this? It's because that. of their thinking. <laughs> Let me come to you, Beatrice, to respond ah. to some of the things she said. And I'll come to you, uh, Susan, as well as Nanaya Jantua. I, I'm actually not going to respond to any of the things she has said, because what she has said is are actually very irrelevant to the discussions at hand. The discussions at hand is whether the MPP is a party of principle. You cannot come and sit here this morning and tell me that my government has failed that my government has failed and has destabilized our currency. Unemployment is high. My government, the MPP, has failed. And so we want to hear what the NDC wants to say to my failing government. In any case, if Dr. Laomia does everything today, what will he do tomorrow? You see, these guys are a group of people who always brings the new level of lowness in public discourse and governance. When I was growing up, to say that you want to be a public officer or you want to be in politics, it, it, it was a big thing. And when you listen to people on radio growing up, you could see that these guys were deep. They were some of the inspiration why when we were growing up, we had to bury our heads in books because we knew that if you had to sit on national television, you ought to be deep these days. The levels of national discourse has been practically reduced to nothing that the citizens can no longer have discussion on anything because maternal health care must be solved by free SHS. Because the issue of a constitutional crisis and discussion is a free SHS matter. That the issue of many people not having employment is a free SHS matter. And practically, we all don't have any problems in Ghana again because we ought to be grateful that a failing government has symbolically implemented a good policy. That is the discussion every time on every air. I think that we owe it a duty to raise the level of the discussion because the people listening to us sometimes are even more intelligent than us. But we've been sent here by our political parties. In the case of Nana Jansu, an independent candidate who has to vacate a seat. Did I tell you? <laughs> you know, to, to come and speak. And so we ought to raise the level of the discussion. What I want to say is that there is a looming danger ahead of us with the current attitude of the MPP in government. Every government at some point in time must learn when to say it is okay. Every government at some point in time must have the humility to say that we probably didn't get this right. And so when you ask me what President Mahama has done and what the NDC is seeking to do, I say that seated here to our right, is a rich hospital. That is our record. We compare it to you digging a 58 million hole. Seated to my left is the UGMC. You have nothing. And we see we are talking about karma and precedent. When we had COVID, the health minister went to President Mohammed's UGMC to take a leave. That is where he went to I take a leave. UGMC. Yes, Just President Mohammed's UGMC, the NDC's UGMC which the MPP was not the political party that built. And so the NDC is a political tradition that we do not claim perfection. But for a political tradition that can be credited to ev with every teaching hospital in the Fourth Republic, a political tradition that can be credited with rural electrification, a tradition that can be credited with every polyclinic. You, you if you think that you have done something, you, have, you, should, be, you should be very worried as a, a, a dentist that this government had access to 21 billion and they don't have a single hospital without regional or teaching to show that when we had COVID, when people died, this is what we have to show. That you had to fall on President Mohammed's buffers. You don't have a single economic buffer. You came to dissipate all the resources. Sometimes I don't want to get angry, but it's the arrogance and ignorance for the MPP for me. That you practically didn't do anything. You have mismanaged our economy. You have mismanaged our energy sector. Today, you even have a leeway. We are not talking about economics. We are talking about um, constitutional matters. And then you say that we should make the topic about economics. I mean, let's raise the level of the discussion. This um, 
shifting tongues and coming in with rehearsed scripts and doing this will not work. The people want to know at the end of our discussion whether it is fair for the NPP MPs and including one NDC MP to vacate their seats because they have left the party that brought them to parliament. If at the end of the discussion the people can't get an answer, what did we come to do? She was trying to claim that uh, what the NDC is doing in parliament now is diversionary. And what was Joe Wise, an NPP MP? He wasn't removed at that time. Why is nobody pointing out that? So we, let, let him you make we have point. a precedent. We have a precedent. That's what I'm saying. You that one for one that you, you, you see, that's what I'm saying. That the MPP must be careful of the precedent they've set. You have set a precedent that the president can just take the daughter and then give her $34 million. Where is this coming from? <laughs> I'm talking about precedent. That now you have to pay something for cash for seat. Now you can actually take party people as election electoral election. commission. That you can actually just take party executives and make them Supreme Court judges from the bar to the Supreme Court. These are the dangerous precedent. In 2020, like my can mother we, would can say, we, can we yes, just stick yes, to, no, to, to the matter so, so that we are dealing with? So in 2020, with. like my mother would say, you think you are doing me. When Michael Quay wrote the ruling, and I'm relying on Michael Quay, I agree and with him. And you read a bit of yeah, that. Yeah, I read a bit of that. So nothing will change to seal the wings of corporate. So is it the case of the MPP? That despite everything that is happening in Parliament, the NPP should, uh, the NDC should not enforce the law. Mm. You uh, should just sit back and watch them dissipate their resources. I, I'm coming to you again, uh, Susan, because you started your comments with the need for us to respect principles, as it were. Uh, you know, Dr. Kia doesn't necessarily agree with your argument, but I realize that you also disagreed with some of the points she made earlier, and that's why I'm coming to you to, to get your understanding of exactly what it is. Okay, so we voted the NDC out by a million votes and gave you this country to run and to make our lives better. Eight years, our lives are worse off. You know, when they come, the end people have not learned to take responsibility for their actions and their inactions and always finding somebody to blame and going one person. When people talk about that in the two months uh, you are going to be disenfranchising people or you're going to um, leave people um, um, without an MP, do they remember, Sal, that there are the people in Apafu who have not had an MP for four years under their watch? Do they care? Do we hear the arguments there? Did they get up in parliament and argue that it was wrong? They should come out and show it to us. You know, when they talk about uh, manifestos, we all have beautiful manifestos. What is important is that, do we act them out for the benefit for the people of the people? We don't see it. Free SHS, it's funny, you know, I used to be with the CPP. The CPP, because they don't have a loud megaphone, when they do their manifestos and their things, they are unable to, to, to broadcast it the way that it, it, it ought to be broadcasted. So it is usually taken by the dominant parties and run by the dominant parties and made it look like it belongs to them. Sometimes when I look at Nanado's things when he started off, I said his, his stint in the Ideological Institute helped him because he tries to be, you know, tries to do some of the things that Nkrumah was doing. Look, free SHS, and they think that, I mean, you have novice politicians, they don't learn their history, and they think that free SHS is, is, is Nanado's brain child. Really? They should go and learn their history. When even in the tertiary, our parents who went to tertiary here were being fed free, everything. You, they even had... Um, uh, how would I put it, uh, uh, um, au pairs to help them in, 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 in their university and the food three times a day and etc, etc. That has been our history. Nobody should come and try and tell us that free SHS is the brainchild. What happens is that when it is good for the people, it is good for the people. So it doesn't matter whose idea it was. You understand? We, we believe uh, as increments in the conviction of our ideas not for convenience. The MPP, because they took the free SHS as a policy of convenience, not of conviction. See how shambolic they, they, they implemented it. You know, some of the, the children spend more time at home than in school. And so parents who can afford 
find teachers for their children so that their children can have a good education. The symbolic implementation of the SHS is not now that we are going to see it all. We are going to see it later. It, will, it is like Galam say. We will see it later in our lives. That poor, this thing. Look, let me uh, 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 talk about the free SHS. Because I, I know uh, it I just very wanted well. us to stick what, into, yeah, into no, really we, what we are look, talking about. Look, you see, we are, because the, 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 what you call it? Um, free SHS. Eh? We, we implemented it in such a way that still there is such a class system to it. If it was supposed to come and make sure that there is no class system, I'm sorry, that failed woefully. It didn't. Because those who can still afford are giving their children a better education and they'll come. And then when you finish it, Adam, you make it so basa. Then you go and use money to buy, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, pass questions so that children can pass and you can sit there and say that uh, we had 90% this thing. When you virtually fed them the answers, you think that the people that are coming out, they're better got, educated. Who questions for, for? The Ghana Education Service. So they went to get, they went to, they went to get, they went to, 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 they Oh, please, verify. Yes. They bought past questions, 38 million and counting, to, to give to students so that they could pass the exam. You can verify. It is out there. It's public <laughs> knowledge. You understand? Mm. So that they could pass the exams and they can wave and say, we had 90% pass. But do you know, have you ever interviewed some of the people coming out of uh, semi-illiterate? Look, well, let's come back to 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 to. Uh, so to, uh, let's come back the bit to about, the thing. bit about past questions. It's not like the questions going into the the, the current or the, the the exams that is ongoing, but to help them revise for 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 the exams approaching. And this is something new. Well, it is something new that the government will spend 38 million and to, to buy past questions instead of improving, <laughs> improving the, the, the teaching, uh, um, 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 what do you call it, profession or giving them certain skills to help the students, whatever. Past questions, is that what we should be using? I, our I want to come for? to Nanaya to get her thoughts briefly and then we'll move on to the next topic. You which have is to the, give us the same time you gave her. We've got a few minutes, if what you can. <laughs> Nana, no, no, please make your no, point. No, 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 bitches, you see, this, this platform, you need to manage the time. You can't give 15 minutes to one person to talk about things that... Uh, please, you have your time it, to respond to... No, 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 no. To... You, didn't, you didn't give me 15 minutes, right? So you, you need to manage, and that is our problem. You need to I manage. don't think they had 15 minutes. No, but we were timing. I was timing. I was timing. May I time everybody? Okay, please go ahead. Do you get me? So I am telling you that you have to manage the time. We have two topics. We shouldn't digress. Okay. So what Please do you want? Please go ahead with your you, point. No. You so I mean, say? we've had the, I've the so women. Many things. Mm -hmm. What do you want me to say? No. What no. you make of any points that struck you really in the arguments that have uh, been uh, talked about so far on the floor? Me, I'm confused. Are we talking about the parliament? You're no, we are talking about, about the parliament thing. But we had a clear bringing in the bit about the, the records of the government and the M NDC not having any message. The reason they are going to parliament to bring what she thought was a diversionary you know, message by asking the speaker to declare the four seats uh, vacant. How, how, and and they've had see, the opportunity you, you to, see, see, to respond to uh, that. Richard, you see, the point is that if you disrespect our constitution, if you disrespect everybody, this is what happens. You see, the H even makes it clearer. I showed it to you. The H says that you vacate your seat if you elected a member of parliament as an independent candidate and later you join a political party. And that is what the former um, MP has done. This is very categorical. You don't even need an interpretation to it. Me, I'm not a lawyer, but this one is clear language. You don't need an interpretation for issues with free SHS. You see, what the MPP, when it comes to I am sick, they'll say we have done free SHS. I am hungry, they'll say we have done free SHS. I, I, I don't have money for fuel, they say we have done free SHS. Uh, the economy is bad, they say we have done free SHS. Free SHS is benefiting a portion of Ghanaians. What about those who are not benefiting from free SHS? Besides, you see. Um, my, my sister here, my big sister here has said everything. Mm. Free SHS is not the baby of MPP. This morning, let me say good morning to my, my secretary in Ashanti region, uh, um, Salam, and also to uh, Honorable Grace Ayinsu. Uh, 
I see Kado Ketan, the PC. She's doing a great job. And I also say a good morning to my friend Julie. Julie Hamako. You see, the point is that free SHS is not a, the blueprint of the new patriotic party. It was started by the CPP under Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. Everybody knows it. And because they don't have the blueprint and they don't have the humility to ask, they have just implemented it anyhow. I don't think Doc here should even talk about somebody hasn't got a policy to stabilize. You have destroyed. You also want to come to power. You are not telling us how you are going to clean up your own mess. When you create a mess, who cleans it up? You have not even told us. I want to say something. You know what? With the market, the market responds immediately there is a change. That's true. Do you get it? The market, yeah. it responds immediately yeah. that there is a change. Because right now, everybody is on a standby. They don't have confidence in the economy. They don't want to put their money in the economy. People are hiding their money. They've changed their money to dollars. They are hiding it and all that. Immediately, the Virgin Atlantic is coming to Ghana. Oh, Virgin Atlantic is coming the to Ghana. Is going at I, I want us well. to stay within context because we, we, have have to to the the we have to move to the president. We have to move to the president talking about illegal mining. And then, please, if you would allow Nana to make your point. I've lost this allow Nana to make your point. Yeah, I am saying if Virgin Atlantic is coming to Ghana, it's not because the economy is good, because Ghanaians travel, whether good or bad. He has they have noticed that these days because the economy is bad, everybody is leaving the country. Go to the airport and see the number of people who are there traveling. Go to the embassy, American embassy. You pass there at the roundabout. Every Tuesday I pass there from my rounds. The number of people who are sitting there. It is what economy? Economy should benefit us. And I'm saying that if things change, if there is a change in leadership, the market itself will respond immediately. Number two. His Excellency John Dramani Mahama have read me. I don't like people who just denigrate. They're always denigrating him, insulting him. I want to tell the MPP here, this time round there, eh, you cannot use insult to get to power. You cannot use, you should give us verifiable things that you are coming to do. You have not been able to even tell us what you will do with Galamsey. Your leader is uh, 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 the vice president who has vacated his post. He is nowhere to be found. His post is vacant. His seat is vacant. We should, he, you see, Honorable, um, um, what is his name? Haruna should also add the seat of the vice president. <laughs> it should be declared vacant. Because why, why, why are you saying Why is he? You see, in this country, a president, any time a vice president is, even any leader, you can see more of him than the president. Today, you see more of Nanado doing official work than Baumia. He's a he's a he's a president. He is camp which president who he should be writing his handing over notes, not sitting in Savannah talking. He he's should hoping, be he wants he wants to he said that he wants to hand over to Baumia so he oh, wants to Oh that one he's just joking, but forget about it. He cannot it will never happen. Then it means that Nadu is not in touch. It can never happen in this country in twenty twenty four. We will vote against them today. And forevermore. I want to move to the next one, but I want you to yes. start with okay. your thoughts on it. Where the president said that he was willing to take the political risk to fight Galamse. And he said that uh, when he was uh, drawing a thank you tour in the Northeast region, which you just uh, alluded to. And I want to bring you a quote of what he said. He said, this Galamse matter, which has risen a lot in Ghana today, the last election in the mining district of the country, the MPP did very badly, largely because the NDC presidential candidate and the party had gone around the mining areas and saying that the policy that I was implementing of trying to stop Galamse will be reversed when he came to power. And that those who were already in jail for offenses, the Galamse offenses, all of them would be, uh, uh, all of them will be freed. When I said I was putting my presidency on the line, that's what I meant. That I was prepared to take the political risk involved in trying to deal with this Galamse phenomenon. The result, of course, was that the mining districts, especially in the Western region, all of them, including almost nearly even Takwa, was lost to the MPP. That is what I meant when I said I'm putting my presidency on the line. That I was prepared to take the political risk involved in coming to grips with the problem. That's what the president is saying now, trying to explain what he meant by he was putting his presidency on the line. Your take. That's what 
that he lost. <laughs> the party lost where? The party lost because they didn't do well in those areas. And they, or they lost and they, 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 they did something. Because you, you can't tell me that you put your presidency on the line when you won the election. He said, no, but your Manama went to do propaganda against but, but, him. But in reality, did he lose? Did he lose? Did the MPP lose and maybe we didn't know? Because why is he saying he put his presidency? He, he won. MPP is in power today. Or they did something after announcing that the, the elections five times by the EC because we don't understand why he's always saying he does he know something that we don't know because you are in power so how did you put your presidency on the line what actually happened what Kennedy said is it true that he knows how they won the election seriously no how can you come and tell us that you put your when you are still sitting there when you put your presidency on the line you lose and he did not lose he didn't, he didn't lose the election. And why is he always bringing in NDC? It is very inconsequential and very annoying. Why? We have given you work to do. Why are you always bringing in somebody who was there before you that we voted against in 2016 and by your own actions and your words, you say that Ghana voted against the person in 2020. So why are you always bringing them? In the picture, why is always His Excellency John Dramani Mahama their target? What is the problem? Beatrice, tell me because I do not understand that when they speak, they won't. They, they will always mention his name. Why he's become some some kakai for them? He or just what? put it in context that he was there to say that uh, he was going to do something different against illegal miners. So, so and did he win? He was there to say, did he win? What is the problem? That is his policy. Is it your business? It's not anybody's business. If I have policy, my party has a policy, another party, you are in power. Directive principles of state policy is very categorical in the constitution. It is because we don't respect our constitution. The MPP does not respect our constitution. For them, it is about their party first. It's about being in power to subjugate Ghanaians. You see, when Beatrice says that Danado is like an Arabian king, it is we who we have allowed him. Because you see, a leader is what the people allow him to do. I'm coming to you, Susan. Uh, what's your interpretation of what the president is telling us now? That indeed, he did put his presidency on the line, and that's why they lost, perhaps parliamentary-wise, in those uh, mining districts and areas. The president speaks well, but that's all he does. <laughs> nice, bro. Can't I say it so nicely? But, you know, but basically, it's hollow. Like my sister said, he said he put his presidency on the line, and yet he still won. So what is it? So what is that? So so, no, so, that? no, so so what? So what? Is Galamse not worse than it was previously? Is the turbidity of our water down the years that he's been there, has it not grown? Was it 50 something and then it went down and, and, and we are now at 14? Or it was less than 14,000 eh? and has grown to 14,000? Is the turbidity of the water not just as bad? Is it not in his period uh, that the Minerals Commission can say under his watch as president that behind the police station they are doing illegal mining? Have we not seen people's farms collapse under his watch because illegal mining has taken place? What is he talking about? When TUC, supposed organized people, did not consider their actions properly and decided to go on a strike that we all said, okay, we will support. We don't know what happened in between that. All of a sudden, they say that he has enhanced actions. 100 soldiers, 100, because... And that, and intention look, to, look, and intention the, to the, revoke the, 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 the the, the intention to, okay, so the intention to revoke the LI. What is the MPP doing about the revoking of the LI in Parliament? They are, they are more interested in protecting three seats of theirs. Instead of saying that, look, let these three seats go so that we get to the substance of the matter. Anybody who is interested in making sure that the Galam say this and invoking that ally, they want to be reaping from that ally till the very last minute. If they were so interested in, in Galamse, they would have dispersed with this. The some fans are back. They bent some, they bent some they for sure. Back. All the things that were cosmetic, they did. 
the hundred soldiers they sent. Look, we are talking about a, 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 a two million plus people there practicing uh, Ill, uh, illegal um, mining. And you send a hundred soldiers and you think, what happened to those drains the, and, and drones that were supposed to be, you know, uh, uh, um, given accurate, pinpointing accurate um, um, positions of, 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 uh, of illegal mining. When you are sending, you are sending what, a hundred troops, where was the air support? Where was the, uh, the, 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 the river or the riverine support from the, the, the Navy mm -hmm. and, the, and the air support from the, the, the uh, uh, what do you call it, the Air Force? You sent a hundred people and you think that we can be fooled. We, we have Look, a, let's, let's, let's mark it. Huh? Let's mark it. We say karma is the same. Those poisoned waters will not, will not be only by innocent people, unfortunately. All those who are complicit will taste those poisoned waters. All those One who are complicit will have their progeny over the years poisoned. Let's not think about wealth now and that we are protecting our party. You lose elections, so what? You, you are more interested in your party and winning elections than the good of the people. So you put your presidency on the line, so what? We, we have have, we, have we benefited from you putting that presidency on the line? It was hollow, just as everything he has said is hollow. We, we have less than five minutes to wrap up our conversation here. But Beatrice, I want to give you the opportunity oh. and then uh, uh, if Kia, Dr. Kia as well. Less than five minutes. Yes, ma'am. Well, I, I think Akira that <laughs> what surprises me is the fact that Ghanaians still take President Nanado as a very serious person. This is a man who told us he has checked out that the next leader will probably have to come and solve the mess. That mess includes economy, galamse, jobs, and every other thing. And so we don't practically expect the president to do much. But I'm even surprised that people take Nanado serious when he speaks. You remember when they started the borrowing spree, where Nanado's cousin, Ken Oferiata, made over $9.3 million from over borrowing. And the minority kept telling them that we would do a debt exchange. I remember Vivid did well. And to even mimic his accent, he came on national television to tell us, the fellow Ghanaians, there will be no haircut. That there will be no haircut. What happened? People of his age, his mates, he took their hard-earned, and older, he took their hard-earned money. And, and today, many people cannot afford the basic necessities of life. That is how wicked Nanado is. This is a man who wants to will the properties. That's not a strong word. That is wicked. So what should be a softer term? Please help me. Because how else would you describe? Nanado knows that at 82, his colleagues cannot work. And yet he watched on the overborrowed and took their hard-earned cash. I had a friend's father die from that action. How do you explain to that friend that it is not wickedness, that the father died because the, the, of debt exchange? What I'm saying is that Nanado has proven over the time to be exactly opposite what he says. He says he's a human rights lawyer. Check the... Human Rights Index, check the Press Freedom Index, check the Corruption Perception Index. Everything under this Nanado has been the worst. So when he says he's a human rights lawyer, he does otherwise. He says there will be no haircut. He gave some of them painful haircuts, not just on the hair, but everywhere. So when he says that he puts his presidency on the line to fight Galamse, practically what he's telling you is that I did not act on the Professor from Pom Boateng report. I hate that report. The people in the Flagstaff house who are probably engaged in Galamse, I put them on the line. So it's practically nothing is being done. They have told you, Napo, so who, wait, finally, whose word should we take? Napo says they will not stop the Galamse, that the people need the money. 
Nanado says I put my presidency on the line. As, yes, you're you even shocked. I'll send you the video. You can't even believe Nako said that. You, you can't even say, you, 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 you can't even believe he could say that, right? She can't even believe Nako could say that. Let me send you the video. You give uh, Okay, I, I, I think I may want to respond and then we can conclude. Your government may also on video to have said that everybody has seen that. That's the matter. I think they have spoken about it. The hypocrisy of the NDC right now, it is just mind-boggling on this Galamse issue. What um, His Excellency Nanadu Dankwa said is true, and it's not something that only he has said. Ben Epson even said the Galamse fight was the cause of MPP's parliamentary flop in the 2020 elections. He said it. You can Google it and you will find it. The argument they are yeah. making is that this if he did... I will come to everything mm. and what's happened. If he said this, then it's, it's not even about propaganda this morning and throwing about things that you know yourself are not true. When the, the country's economy lost oh, about $700 million due to your doomsome mismanagement, it didn't hey, even end hey, there. You had to go and bring... You had to go and bring... was putting on a very big he has put in the most comprehensive fight against 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 Galamse. Nobody in this, this ex president Mahama has been president before. Are we not saying we have two months, basically two months to to to, to the election. What the president is saying is that as the opposition party who is hoping to lead this country one day, what is your stance on this issue? But me, I don't even need ex president Mahama to say anything because we know his stance. He has said it several times. I've, when he I've was there, Professor he didn't say saying anything. saying that they will train them to do responsibility. To how? Money. Let me come to how. Me, I've sat here on this platform and told you that we have trained 4,000 people at UMATS. We have done it before. You have been there before. What did you do? Nothing to write home about on your Galamsey fight. Zero. Nothing. Somebody comes and is trying to do it. What you come and say at that time right. is that eh, your, what's it called? You grant amnesty to the people that are, that is what expressed the Muhammad that, said. When we were arresting people, he said, I will grant them amnesty. That is what he said. So it didn't even office. end there. You then he will send his party, party up. Uh, he will send his party. This frame poem, I don't even think Beatrice has read it. Because in there, it, it says that ex President Mahama, his Donald Ensuya's firm, which was mining in the Deso Forest Reserve, you signed MOUs with them to provide them military security. Yeah, it is yeah. there. I will, sh I will read it to you, you if we have the time. Yes. It is not a lie. I'll post it on my Twitter for anybody who wants to see. You so you can come and sit here. You can't do this. You can't, it is here. It is in the report that you have quoted. Let me read it for you. You have, you have pushed me, so we will do this today. Yes, do it. Always quoting reports when you don't even seem to want to well, actually well, look at what is in there. Please let me finish this, or it is, it's not fair. It's uh, not going to take is long so at useless all. As no, to the allow government has, has done to be so many balancing. things. What you so did we was to send people to if the can, mining. What you could do at that time? We have to wrap up. What you could do at that time was to send your people to the mining site to tell them that they should continue to mine. And that same person right now, when we are fighting the fight, is sitting on UTV saying that. Many Ghanaians will remember the name of CJ Alaska, a mining company co-owned by Donald Ensia, a Canadian national called Simon. And that caused a lot of distraction in the town of Dentro. During the last NDC regime, several mining companies signed MOUs with the Ghana Army that regulated the supply of security. Dr. Kia, we'll have to we'll have to end this here now. And you're just watching. Uh, Dr. Kriya Amwakonshi's uh, communications team member for the governing MPP. We've also had uh, Susan Edra Am Am Amankwa, member Alliance for Revolutionary Change. Nana Ya Jantua sitting right here at my right side. Yeah. Nana Ya Achampim Jantua. She doesn't want me to leave that name out. Former uh, General Secretary for the Convention People's Party and Beatrice Anand.
Deputy Spokesperson John Mahama campaign team. My name is Beatrice Edu. Thank you so much for joining us on Big Issue today, on New Day, on TV3. The program continues. Don't go away.